looking into this series all about using Adobe After Effects for the first time. So far we've looked at adding videos and keyframing. In this video we're going to add some effects. Finally! Here's the shot from episode 1, from Jeff Smith's Ronnie Redshirt films. The joke in this shot is the middle guy is going to get disintegrated by a phaser. There wasn't a lot of room at the start of the shot, so I've saved a still image by setting the current time indicator to the last frame of the first video and then going to Composition Save Frame As. There's a much quicker way of doing this, but I'm trying to show you how to use After Effects in sequence and don't want to overwhelm you. So let's add a phaser beam, and fortunately After Effects has a beam effect. Because I have three layers, I want to add my effects onto a fourth layer above them all. This way I don't have to apply it several times, and the easiest way to do that is to use a solid. A solid is like a single colour image, but you don't have to worry about saving a file or anything. To create a solid go to Layer, New, Solid. In the pop-up make sure it's comp size by hitting this button, and use the colour picker to set the colour to black. In my preferences all new layers appear at the current time indicator. You may need to drag your solid to the start of the timeline. Hold shift to get it to snap to the start. And make sure it's above everything else. Now I can't see anything. I'm preparing a separate video about transfer modes. These are similar to Photoshop. So rather than spend a lot of time on them now, let's use the toggle switches and modes button at the bottom of the timeline panel. And now using the drop down on the black solid layer, set the transfer mode to screen. Screen essentially leaves light elements while removing dark ones. Perfect for what we have planned. Now that I have everything set up, let's add the beam. Go to Effects, Generate, Beam. AE adds this to our selected layer. Incidentally, you can search for effects using the Effects and Presets panel, and realistically that's how you'll end up working. You might also have noticed other tutorials where they use this pop-up. This is FX Console from Andrew Kramer's Video Copilot. It's a handy tool to speed up getting to the effects, as well as a bunch of other things, but I'll not be using it in these videos just to keep things simple. So here in Effects Controls we have our beam settings. As you can see I can set the start and end points. We'll zoom out and drag the start point off screen and set the end point into the middle of the guy's chest. Do you see how I'm doing that? I'm using the targets the effects provides, and note the stopwatches, I could keyframe those. Also, the beam doesn't touch the points, that's because its length is set to 25%. We can increase that. The starting point is closer to the camera than the end point, so we'll use the starting thickness to help make it look more 3D. I'll then increase the end thickness a little too. The time is set to 50%, watch what happens as I play with that. Perfect, we can use that to animate the beam. Now move the time indicator to where you want the beam to appear, and click on the time stopwatch to set a keyframe, and then reduce the time to 0%. Now go back to the timeline, and hit U to show any keyframes on the solid, so just our time settings. Move about a second forward and set a new keyframe to 100%. And hit 0 on the keypad to preview the shot. Hitting 0 again will pause the preview after the effect so you don't have to watch the whole sequence. Too slow. Drag the second keyframe closer and preview again. Better. But in TOS the beam would generally appear, stay and then disappear, and in modern Trek it's a much shorter effect going much faster. Let's stick to TOS and add two 50% keyframes to hold the beam at full length longer. Better, it now travels faster and ends faster too. But Trek phases are blue, so use the colour picker to make it so. Although that's TNG and they were orange.
The whiter I make the core, the more solid the beam looks. Now we have our phaser timing, let's drag in the final video layer with the middle guy missing. And let's shorten the black solid to get rid of that blue dot. You could use Alt right square bracket here to trim it. So that's one effect. But we're not done with this shot. We need to make the middle guy light up blue and fade out. And to do that, we'll need to learn to use masks. And to learn about masks, you'll have to wait for the next video.